Well, hello, my friends. It's the Christmas season. And for some of you, it is simply the most wonderful time of the year. But for many, well, December can be tough. It can be stressful. It can be challenging. It can be lonely. I'm wondering if you'd allow me an opportunity to try to encourage you today with this thought. Christmas time really is a season of hope because of God's greatest gift to humanity, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Can I invite you to join me throughout the month of December? May we take a few moments and celebrate the coming of Christ with a special Advent series based in part on my book, Because of Bethlehem. It features a sermon series that I shared with my church. I sure hope you'll enjoy it. And most of all, I hope you'll remember that Jesus Christ really is the reason for the season. May you be blessed as you listen. Well, I tried to blame my um, behavior on the holiday traffic. The Thanksgiving weekend had turned the streets near the shopping mall into controlled chaos. I tried to blame my misdeeds on my state of mind. I had spent most of the day helping to plan a funeral uh, for my ever-weakening mother-in-law, and so our spirits were low, and I was actually driving home from the cemetery. I tried to blame my poor reaction to the reckless, illegal U-turn made by the teenager. He just nearly clipped my bumper. I was turning right onto a very busy thoroughfare. The green arrow gave me permission to make my turn. As I did, the other driver made a sudden, unexpected hairpin illegal <laughs> U-turn around the median. We nearly shared paint. So I honked at him. I'll confess, it wasn't a gentle tap <laughs> on the horn. One of those, hey, I'm over here, watch out type. It was more of a, you better watch it, buddy. I'm, you, more of a, a blast. Well, he drove this low riding wide-wheeled, two-toned, exhaust-puffing jalopy out of the 80s. It needed a muffler. It also needed a more mature passenger because as he accelerated his car, a long arm came out of the passenger side window. And he gave me a backhanded one-finger wave. <laughs> I sped up. <laughs> and thanks to the next traffic light, I was within seconds side by side with the perpetrator. So I lowered my window. The kid in the passenger seat still had his down. He looked up at me. He wore a baseball hat, shoved over a mop of black hair, and the brim of the hat faced sideways, as did the smirk on his face. You need to watch that wave, son, I said. In an ideal world, he would have apologized. <laughs> and I would have wished him a Merry Christmas, and I wouldn't be telling you this story. But the world is not ideal. And when I told him to watch that wave, he smirked even more and demanded, make me. When was the last time somebody said, make me, to me? <laughs> I couldn't remember. Middle school? High school football locker room? 
There was kind of a brouhaha at the high school graduation. Maybe somebody said something there. Make me. That's what teenagers say. Of course, he was a teenager. As for me, I'm a 60-year-old pastor. I write Christian books. <laughs> I'm supposed to be a voice for peace on this earth. I should have raised my window. I should have driven off, but I didn't. I looked down at him, and I looked down on him. And with my own version of a smirk, I said back to him, what did you say? And he repeated it. Make me. All the saints in heaven were saying, Locato, drive on. <laughs> Common sense was saying, Locato, raise your window. Forget it. The better angels of heaven were prompting, drive away, Locato. And I wish I could say I listened to them. But the dare of the punk activated the punk in me the punk that I hadn't seen since that graduation party in 1973. <laughs> and I looked down at him again. The light still hadn't changed. And I said, okay, where do you want to go? <laughs> His eyes got as wide as hamburger patties. <laughs> he couldn't believe I said that. You can't believe I said that. <laughs> I couldn't believe I said that. When he realized I was serious, he got serious too. He said, let's settle this at the shopping mall. I said, are you kidding? There are too many people at the shopping mall. <laughs> you follow me. All of a sudden, <laughs> I was the expert on where to go to duke it out. What was I thinking? This time the light did change and I accelerated. And through my rearview mirror, I could see those two guys talking to each other. And I could just imagine them saying, should we or shouldn't we? Should we? What, you know, what? And all of a sudden they turned on their blinkers and turned into a parking lot. And boy, was I relieved. <laughs> I drove the rest of the way to my in-law's house saying, what were you thinking? You can get put in jail for this kind of stuff. What in the world? I'd like to blame my misbehavior on my state of mind or on the stress of the traffic or on that U-turn that was illegal, mind you. But I really can only blame my misbehavior on one culprit, and that is myself. The punk inside me. And for a few minutes at a stoplight near a shopping mall, I completely forgot who I was. And I forgot who he was. He wasn't someone's son. He wasn't a creation of God. He wasn't a potential miracle. He wasn't fearfully and wonderfully made. He was just a disrespectful jerk. And I let him bring the disrespectful jerk out of me. Now, the Bible has a name for this kind of behavior. And you're probably not going to like the name. It's called sin. And according to the Bible, there is a potential punk within every single one of us. We have a sinful nature. And this sinful nature is all about self. As is often said, sin is defined by its middle letter, I. Sin is when I only care about me. Sin pleases self, promotes self, preserves self. Sin is selfish. I have a sinful nature. So do you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> but so do you. Check me on this. But under the right circumstances, you would do the wrong thing. 
You would. Under the right circumstances, you are a candidate for doing the wrong thing. You don't want to. You'll try not to. But you will. Why? Because there is within you and within me a, a sin nature. We've always had it. We were born with it. Our parents didn't have to tell us how to throw a temper tantrum, right? Nobody had to show us how to steal a cookie from a sibling. And nobody had to tell us to stomp our foot and say, mine. Somehow we just knew how to do that. We knew how to do all of that before we were out of diapers. It's a sin nature. We entered the world with a sin nature. The problem of every human is the problem of the human heart. And that is selfishness or sin, sin nature. We entered the world with this nature. Listen, God entered the world to deal with it. 